I'm Toby Boudreau, CTO and one of the partners at Control Group. Uh, we're a design and tech company in New York that builds products and platforms for clients. We also do a whole bunch of R&D, both for ourselves and for our clients as a paid service. And one of the trends that, uh, that pops up over and over in our R&D work is identifying existing infrastructure, um, services, uh, data points, user behaviors, spatial economics, and trying to find uh, secondary uses for those without necessarily bringing to bear any new invention. Um, so it's a good cheap way to, to prototype things for clients and for ourselves. And um, a, an example of that uh, that came out of our R&D group, and it's not particularly new science in and of itself, um, is a project that we lovingly call What the Mac, that as Brady sort of uh, pointed out, takes advantage of the fact that all of these wireless devices that we have, um, our phones, our iPads, our laptops, um, jumbies, all of those are constantly sending out pings uh, to the wireless routers nearby. And that's, that's how they maintain state and uh, communication uh, pipeline. Those pings include the unique hardware identifier for each of those client devices, the MAC address. I'm sure lots of y'all are familiar with what those are. And uh, when, when those wireless nodes receive them, they know the signal strength uh, of, of that ping and the timestamp and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but it's not really all that invasive. It's, not, it's the, the transport layer, not the message layer. So you don't have to worry about um, your data itself being sent out. It's just sort of the fact of existing in a wireless world. Um, has this extra surplus that we can take advantage of. There are some companies that are doing neat things with this so far. Um, Euclid Elements is a startup that puts sensors into brick and mortar retail environments to do consumer tracking and conversion and uh, analytics, um, kind of treating it as a physical cookie. And that's how we and other people think of it as well. Some massive technology companies that provide location services uh, do war driving, driving through neighborhoods and cities, uh, harvesting all of the pings that are out there with all of the unique MAC addresses, SSIDs, plotting those to lat long in order to bolster the, the accuracy of their location services. So that's a cool use of it as well. Um, the stuff that we've been doing, because we don't really package up our own products, we're, we're just purely a services company, we've been just trying to find a way to lower the cost of entry to messing around with this kind of thing. We have a whole bunch of network engineers and hardware guys and electrical engineers and user experience designers, and just this big mix of people. We're about 100 people. So we can solve most problems pretty quickly. Um, so we've taken to initially uh, hardware that is solid state little Linux routers and written just some shell scripts and uh, put the hardware into promiscuous mode so that it, it's willing to capture all of these pings around it. And then we pipe it up to Amazon uh, through a queue service, transform it a little bit, and store it as JSON in S3 so that we can run uh, MapReduce and Pig uh, queries against it. And that lets us do really goofy things, like know how many times certain people have been to the bathroom at work, um, or plot uh, heat maps as people flow through space. Uh, because when you use multiple of these, you can start doing like trilateralization and stuff with, uh, with the, the relative signal strengths. So it's fun stuff, and it's fun to play with, but it takes knowing how to hack the hardware. It takes knowing how to gather the data, parse the data, uh, move it somewhere meaningful so that you can mess with it. And that is kind of cross-disciplinary. So uh, we have this little open source project that we're, um, that we're opening up that just lowers the barrier to entry for all of this stuff. In addition, though, to letting you set up your own networks really easily, um, we also are capturing sample data sets that are real data so that people who don't feel like setting up the network, even though it's fairly easy, uh, can start running their own pig uh, queries and, and finding patterns. Um, Matt Bedolf had an excellent talk yesterday morning talking about um, prototyping applications with real data and how real data lets you start to identify patterns and um, functionality and design elements uh, that wouldn't happen with the kind of test data that we programmers create just with scripts, um, especially when you're thinking about like user flow and how people cluster together or how multiple devices might often be together, like my phone and my, my MacBook Air, um, or uh, how people at, at a party you know, move, move around. Um, so we've actually set up here, uh, with O'Reilly's uh, permission, um, an example network in the exhibition room next door. And so we are currently harvesting all of y'all's uh, excess surplus data. And um, we're anonymizing it a little bit. Uh, we're hashing up the MAC addresses themselves. Though it's worth noting that uh, 
ourselves, and, and I know Euclid does the same, uh, maybe a few companies are, are charitable and ethical, but there's nothing that says people have to do this, and there's nothing you can do about it if you want to be on a wireless network. Um, so we're, we're in the nice area, though. So we're storing um, the address, the signal strength relative to all the nodes. We're storing um, the, uh, the device manufacturer. And we're making all of that available pretty soon on, uh, on GitHub. So we're doing this to lower the barrier of, of entry um, and to see what kind of cool ideas y'all might have. Um, also to maybe recruit some contributors to our efforts or to our company. We're always trying to grow. Uh, and the URL for the GitHub uh, project is right here. The only thing there right now is a readme um, because we're going to let people opt out of this. If you find us next door, uh, we can identify your MAC addresses, we can find the hashed version, and we can scrub it before we turn this over as a public data set. Um, there's not much point in doing that, uh, but, but you can do that. And uh, just follow this, this bookmark, and pretty soon over the next few days, there'll be sample software, um, sample data, and instructions on playing around with this stuff. Thanks.